Today's story is about a horrifying incident that occurred nationwide in Japan. It is the tale of the notorious vending machine serial killings that took place from April 30th to November 11th, 1985, claiming a total of 13 lives. The Paraquat murder case, also known as the vending machine serial killings, involved indiscriminate poisoning incidents across various regions in Japan, where the agricultural herbicide Paraquat was used. Due to the lack of widespread CCTV coverage at that time, no evidence was left behind. The culprit remained unidentified, and the case turned into an unsolved mystery, with not even a suspect being apprehended. On September 10, 1985, a 52-year-old man from Osaka, Japan, had an unusually fortunate day. After going fishing in the early morning, he decided to buy an Oronomen C drink from an automatic vending machine. To his surprise, two bottles came out instead of one. Upon returning home, he drank both bottles of Oronum and C, just like any other day. Little did he know that it would be the unluckiest day of his life. A few days later, he collapsed clutching his chest and was rushed to the emergency room. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. The cause of his death was acute myocardial infarction. This was unexpected because he had no pre-existing heart conditions. His family, bewildered by the sudden turn of events, agreed to an autopsy. It was revealed that the cause of the heart attack was paraquat poisoning. Paraquat was widely used as a pesticide due to its low cost and strong effectiveness. However, there were incidents where farmers mistakenly drank paraquat, thinking it was a beverage, leading to fatal consequences. However, the victims in these cases had no connection to agriculture, and there was no apparent reason for them to take their own lives. One victim, before succumbing, reported feeling unwell after drinking Oronomen C. Based on his statement, the police collected the Oronomen C bottle he had consumed, and Paraquat was detected inside it. The police concluded that someone had secretly placed Paraquat into the drink bottle inside the vending machine, which the victim had consumed, leading to his death. Unfortunately, this incident was not isolated. On September 11th, in Mie Prefecture, located about two hours away from Osaka, Japan, a similar incident occurred. A 22-year-old university student purchased real gold from a vending machine near his home. He unexpectedly found two bottles at the vending machine's outlet, thinking it was his lucky day. He drank both bottles of real gold, believing he was fortunate. However, immediately after drinking, he felt nauseous and started vomiting. Alarmed, his parents rushed him to the hospital, where he received intensive care. Despite their efforts, he passed away a few days later. The police investigated the case and detected a pesticide called Diquat in the real gold he had consumed. Although Diquat had only half the toxicity of Paraquat, it was still potent enough to cause loss of life. Simultaneous incidents using the same method led the police to suspect these cases as a series of indiscriminate killings. As a result of the investigation, it was revealed that a truck driver in Hiroshima, who had also consumed Oronomen C from a vending machine on April 30th, about five months prior, had died due to paraquat poisoning. While taking a break from driving, he had stopped his truck and purchased Oronomen C from a vending machine. Upon noticing that Oronomen C was inside the machine, he assumed someone had left it there and decided to drink it while driving. Shortly after consuming it, he felt unwell, managed to pull over, then lost consciousness. He was found by a passerby and was transferred to the hospital, but he passed away three days later. Paraquat was detected in his vomit. People continued to die in this manner, yet the police were powerless. There were no witnesses, and the motive for the crimes remained elusive. Moreover, in 1985, CCTV cameras were not widely installed in Japan, making it impossible for the police to find any leads. The perpetrator traveled across Japan, placing drinks laced with paraquat into vending machines. This elaborate crime spree continued. On September 19, a man in his 30s living in Fukui Prefecture, while driving, drank cola from a vending machine by the roadside. Soon after, he experienced health issues and was rushed to the hospital. Unfortunately, he died three days later. Paraquat was also detected in his body. On September 20, a 45-year-old man in Miyazaki drank real gold from a vending machine and tragically succumbed to paraquat poisoning two days later. These horrifying incidents persisted. 
On September 23, a man in his 50s living in Osaka, while on his way to his parents' house, purchased a Ronaman C from a vending machine on the roadside. He found another bottle inside and drank both. From the next day, he suffered excruciating pain and, after enduring two weeks of agony, he passed away. Realizing the strange taste while drinking the second bottle, he spat out the liquid, threw away the remaining drink, but unfortunately, it was too late. On October 5th, a 44-year-old man living in Saitama Prefecture also fell victim. While driving, he purchased a Ronaman C from a vending machine by the roadside. Finding another bottle inside the machine, he first drank one at home and later mixed the second one with alcohol. Feeling unwell, he went to the hospital, but sadly, he passed away two weeks later. Paraquat was detected in the remaining bottle of Oronaman C. On October 15, a 69-year-old man living in Nara Prefecture met a similar fate. On October 25, a 55-year-old man in Miyagi Prefecture and on October 28, another 50-year-old man in Osaka, both succumbed to Paraquat poisoning. In November, three more victims emerged. Among them, a 17-year-old female student, despite the warning label on the vending machine regarding the Paraquat incident, chose Fanta from the vending machine. Inside the outlet, there was another Coke, so she took both and drank them, sadly passing away after consumption. A man chose milk from the vending machine and discovered an extra one inside the outlet. He took it home, drank it, and tragically passed away 47 days later. Paraquat was also found in the milk he had consumed. The most horrifying aspect of these incidents lies in the nature of Paraquat. Paraquat sprayed on plants reacts with organic matter and oxygen within the plants to generate active oxygen, leading to the destruction of biological molecules. Consequently, plants die within an hour. This same process applies to the human body, causing excruciating pain for 1 to 10 days after ingesting Paraquat, ultimately resulting in death. Unfortunately, there is no antidote for paraquat poisoning, as it continually generates active oxygen, rendering antioxidants ineffective. Moreover, attempting to treat patients with oxygen masks, meant to help those experiencing respiratory distress due to paraquat poisoning, only accelerates the production of active oxygen, making it a near-impossible situation for doctors. Experts have stated that once a person has ingested even a sip of paraquat, the fibrosis of vital organs occurs rapidly, making it virtually impossible to survive from the moment they notice something is wrong. These horrifying incidents instilled fear in many people, and the police conducted investigations desperately trying to apprehend the culprit. Despite ongoing investigations, similar crimes continued to occur, but the police were unable to catch the perpetrator. Since the incidents primarily took place in vending machines located in suburban areas rather than urban centers, witnesses were scarce. Additionally, the easy availability of Paraquat posed a significant problem. At that time, Paraquat was designated as a pesticide in Japan, but it could be purchased by anyone over 18 years old if they carried identification. However, due to excessive and improper use even by farmers, resulting in paraquat poisoning, and in light of the serial killings, the Japanese government eventually classified paraquat as a deadly poison. Many countries around the world, realizing the dangers of paraquat, raised their voices to demand the cessation of paraquat sales and stricter regulations. Japan ceased production in 1999, making it an unavailable substance today. Due to the high volume of paraquat sales at that time, finding the culprit was practically impossible. Other beverages were available, but the reason Paraquat was specifically injected into a Ronaman C is speculated to be because it was the most popular nutritional supplement among the Japanese population. The infamous vending machine serial killings not only caused 13 victims in a short period but also led to three imitative crimes in the same year, shocking the Japanese people. In fact, a similar incident occurred in 1977. From early January to mid-February of that year, cyanide-laced Coca-Cola was placed in public telephone booths, including those in major cities like Tokyo, leading to the indiscriminate cyanide coke killings. This event also caused significant repercussions in Japan. People initiated a movement or they refused to eat any food purchased outside their immediate presence due to that incident. 
The Japanese government also recommended vending machine owners to sell canned beverages with lids that clearly indicated whether the beverage was opened or not. The cyanide coke incident, although it occurred in major cities where rapid response and accessibility were better, resulted in only two deaths. However, the Paraquat incident in 1985, happening in slower responding suburban areas with no detoxification available for Paraquat, led to a more certain cause of death for the victims. The truth behind both incidents was never fully revealed, and the cases eventually became unsolved mysteries due to the statute of limitations expiring. Following the Paraquat incident Oronoman C, which suffered significant damage, changed its bottle cap design to ensure consumers could easily check if the bottle was opened. In February 1986, the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare and the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries revised the law, requiring individuals to submit identification documents to purchase Paraquat. Eventually, production of Paraquat was halted in 1999, making it unavailable for purchase today. However, similar incidents have sporadically occurred even recently. On November 13, 2019, in Akita, a man in his 30s selected a canned beer from a vending machine and found another can of a different brand when he retrieved his chosen one. Upon inspecting the can from the different brand, he noticed a small hole about 1 mm in size and observed blue liquid flowing out of the can. Surprised, he immediately reported it to the police, and the blue liquid turned out to be Paraquat. Initially, Japanese police believed they could easily apprehend the culprit behind the Paraquat incident. However, with no witnesses coming forward and lacking any evidence, finding a suspect proved impossible. To this day, not a single clue has been found regarding this perpetrator. Japanese people live in fear, believing that the culprit might still be living somewhere in Japan, and the incident remains an unsolved mystery.